Welcome back to Marriage Isn't Dead, where we try to keep monogamy hot, fun, and sexy through self-improvement. Back at you again with another episode. This one was inspired by a recent trip to the Caribbean. Uh, my wife and I, we took our family to uh, Turks and Caicos. Been there for the past four days. Just got back yesterday and wanted to share a couple things that, I, uh, that I've learned in my life. And I uh, had a couple revelations when it comes to having stuff, having means, and I don't want to sound like a pompous jerk with this, but I want to get across a couple a couple words of wisdom. I understand that the dollar means a lot to a, a lot of people, but I just wanted to share some uh, some insider information from someone that uh, grew up with very little and has a thing or two now, and a little word of warning uh, for the for those of you who are hung up on status and money and things and objects. Just got back from spring break. We did a vacation in the Caribbean in Turks and Caicos. Beautiful place. We're at a resort. Just the landscape is just, it doesn't look real especially for a guy that grew up in small town Iowa. You're sitting on the beach there. The water is crystal clear. It's blue green. It just it doesn't look real. The landscape is amazing. The weather was amazing. Where I was inspired by that particular trip is it was it was beautiful, but the problem is with this kind of stuff, if you live there instead of just visit there, Eventually, it's going to feel different to you, and it's going to normalize eventually. And it seems to me that that time frame where that happens and that occurs for people is typically right around six months. That's something that I've experienced in my life, and that's what I wanted to talk about with this particular episode, where if you get hung up on fancy vacations, travel, and, and stuff, it's all good. You know, if that's what you're into, it's great, but... It seems to me, with my experience, that eventually it loses its luster, and it's just not as eye-popping and extravagant after a period of time passes. As a relationship coach and career coach over the past four or five years, we preach being more attractive when it comes to relationships and particularly trying to salvage a relationship by being more attractive, being more successful, getting in shape, having better style, all of that stuff does matter to a point. But when it comes to success, a trip like we just had, it's awesome. It's a, it's a very cool experience for your family, for your people, for yourself, but it only goes so far. All of those things are good. I don't want to have you have the, the wrong impression about this kind of stuff, but there's some pitfalls that you need to be aware of. And I speak from experience, and that's what I wanted to talk about. There's nothing wrong with being wealthy. There's nothing wrong with having stuff. I'm a capitalist. I think it's a great thing. But ultimately, stuff cannot make you happy. It, it doesn't work that way. If you're not happy internally and you try to fill that, that void with stuff, you could do that the rest of your life, and it will never fill that hole. I know plenty of people that try. I've seen it in my day-to-day -day life. If you're miserable, stuff isn't going to fill that hole. So today, let's talk about the limitations of that thinking. Having wealth and things can make you comfortable, but this is a cautionary tale for those who are driven and feel like they're, they, they make plenty of money, but there's something missing. I'm a small-town Iowa kid. I always will be a small-town Iowa kid at heart. I have very deep roots in small-town Iowa. It's a beautiful place to grow up. It's incredible. A lot of friendly people, strong families, hard work, determination, all of those things. There's a reason why they call it the Midwestern work ethic. It, it exists. I did not grow up with a whole lot. My folks worked really hard. Both of my parents worked. They provided a pretty decent living for my sister and I. They did what they could. Did we have a lot? No, we didn't. But we had a strong family. We had a, a lot of people around. I had a really good network of friends. Everybody looked out for each other. Just a great nebula to grow up in. 
just a beautiful place. So my upbringing is very humble and I'm proud of it. Any level of success will never change that. I worked very hard in my life. I became a doctor in the early 2000s and success did not come easy to begin with. Just because you're a doctor isn't automatic guaranteed success. You still have to work for whatever you get. I tried my hand at becoming an associate, a hired doc, and honestly, that was not for me. Ultimately, I wanted to have a private practice, call my own shots, have my own place, so I didn't have to answer to anyone. And I achieved that by 2008. My wife and I became business owners, we're in business together, and very rapidly experienced some financial success after that move. And it was great, it was wonderful. We took out a huge chunk of debt, but it was a wise investment and things started paying off pretty quickly. In 2010, we ended up building our home that we live in now, a pretty significant home. Not gonna say how much, not gonna do that. I'm not, it's, this is not a gloating thing. It, much nicer home than I grew up in, very nice neighborhood. So we finished the home and we move in. This is where things really got interesting for my wife and I. We move in at the end of 2010 and for the first month, all we could do was look around our place and just stood there in awe. We couldn't believe this was our house. An incredible feeling, especially for my wife and I. We both have humble upbringings. We did not come from money. We were just in awe for about six months. That's the time frame that I've noticed when it comes to uh, shiny things. So you're going to get six months of shiny for just about anything that you get that's really nice. After six months, the shine kind of wore off and that really fancy home that we built basically became our home, just our home. It was just our place. Like I said, this is not, this is not a bragging episode. That's not what I, what I mean with this. What, it, what I mean by it is that it just became a roof over our head. And you know, people would come over and compliment us on our place. They still do to this day, but it's just our home. It's honestly nothing super special anymore because you get used to it. That's my point. You get new, used to nice things and it takes about six months for anything that I've noticed. You know, some people will be different. That's just how I've noticed it. That's how I've experienced it in my life. Take it or leave it. And like I said, if you're taking this the wrong way, that's on you. This is, this is a whole episode based on my life experience. Same thing happened uh, about three, four years ago. I, uh, I'm a retired race car driver, raced for 20 years. I've, Love to go fast and it just got to be too much work and it wasn't fun anymore and I retired. About three years ago, I got, I got a nice car. I won't say what, but it's definitely not cheap. For about six months, I took care of that thing. I washed it practically once a week. I had trouble driving it because I didn't want to put miles on it. Like all of that, it was just super special for about six months. After six months, it's a fast car. It's fun to drive. I enjoy it, but the shiny wore off. Okay, and that's what it takes. About six months for just about any really big fancy purchase that you make, you the shiny will come off. When it comes to fast cars, a souped up Mustang could be could be faster. Honestly, uh, a 5.0 Mustang with a couple little modifications could absolutely outrun that car. And it's much more practical, a lot less expensive, about actually less than a third of the cost, and you go just as fast. So if you're liking this content, please hit the subscribe button, like it, share it. If this is providing a little bit of value to you, please share it. So what's my point with all of this stuff? I love providing for my family. As a man, it makes me feel good. It makes me feel like I'm doing my job as a father, as a husband as a provider. Ultimately, what I have and what I drive and what I, what I wear, I don't need stuff to make myself feel better. I have that within myself and that's what I want for you. If you've got internal happiness 
it doesn't matter what your net worth is. Your net worth is not your self-worth. I love providing for my family. That's success. That's feeling good about getting up in the morning and doing what you do for a living and making a few dollars. I like providing a comfortable life for my family, my kids, but ultimately that is not what makes me tick. It makes me comfortable, but ultimately I don't need it to be happy. That's the key. If you try to get material worth to make yourself feel better and to, to fill that empty hole within your soul, you could have a trillion dollars and you'll never be able to fill that hole. So the key, the take home message in this one, the key for long-term happiness is maintaining drive and a mission that's worthwhile that you feel good about at the end of the day. That's the key when it comes to internal happiness. That's what you want. That's what you need. That's what you need to strive for. If you don't have that, stick around. That's what this channel is all about. I want you to have happiness long term that's rock solid. Your mission does not have to be a money maker. It's okay to be a money maker if that's if that's your thing. It's all good. There's nothing wrong with that. But at the end of the rainbow, at the end of all of your trials and tribulations, you might find yourself in a dark cave where you wonder was all of this worth it? Trust me. I know. I get it. I get it. It's not about cash. It's about feeling good about what you do for a living. Things will make you comfortable, but they won't provide inner happiness. Period. Thanks for listening and be desirable.